The film unfolds in the year 2045, a time when artificial intelligence or AI plays a central role in people's lives, fulfilling their various needs. We meet a woman named Alice, who is spending time at home with her new boyfriend, Max, and his son, Leo, as they watch a TV show called Homo Ridiculous. This show features cyborgs known as Yonix, who treat humans like pets. Alice feels uneasy about the way humans are portrayed on the show and asks Leo to turn it off. Max tries to reassure her, explaining that the humans on the show are acting willingly. Max attempts to impress Alice with compliments, but her household robot, Monique, detects that his compliments are insincere. Alice then invites Max into her room, where she shares her collection of books and reads her poetry to him. Max, though not genuinely interested in these things, pretends to be enthusiastic to avoid disappointing Alice. Shortly after, Alice's ex-husband, Victor, arrives at her house with Nina, their adopted daughter, and his fiancée, Jennifer. Victor intentionally visits Alice's house to share the news of his upcoming wedding with Jennifer at a luxurious resort on Azola Paradiso Island. Alice congratulates them. But deep down, she feels a tinge of jealousy, which Monique notices. Alice introduces Nina to Max, but Jennifer interrupts, mentioning her recent promotion as a manager and subtly implying that they shouldn't take things lightly. Monique detects Jennifer's sarcasm and jealousy toward Alice, who seems happier. Monique welcomes the guests by offering snacks to Victor and Jennifer. Victor gets frustrated because Alice hasn't updated Monique's data, causing the robot to still treat him as a family member despite their divorce. However, Alice doesn't want to take the blame for this. As they argue, Nestor, the AI home control computer, alerts them about an intruder near the house and sends a small drone to investigate. The drone discovers that it's just the neighbor's dog, Toby, who swallows the drone before entering Alice's house. Meanwhile, Nina is thrilled to see the robot she used to play with during her childhood. Inside the house, Toby suddenly vomits the swallowed drone, causing it to fly erratically until Max destroys it. Dexter, the house cleaning robot, swiftly cleans up Toby's mess. Following the chaos caused by Toby's unexpected visit and the drone incident, Alice's neighbor, Francoise, pays her a visit in search of her dog. Unfortunately, Toby had already left Alice's house after vomiting the swallowed drone. Francoise pretends to be frustrated about her inability to reach her husband, Louis, who is stuck in traffic with his advanced car. Francoise also shares news about self-driving cars refusing to operate and instead following the directives of the AI robot group, Yonix. Jennifer, concerned about her wedding plans at the luxurious resort, worries that this development might disrupt their trip. Alice, on the other hand, teases her ex-husband, Victor, upon learning that the island they're heading to is part of a Yonix cyborg propaganda campaign. Meanwhile, the TV program, Homo Ridiculous, resumes, depicting Unix cyborgs treating a man like a farm animal. Alice notices that something is different in the broadcast, sensing that the Unix cyborgs are not behaving as they usually do. Francoise becomes anxious, fearing that the AI robots in Alice's house might attack them. However, Jennifer dismisses this concern, mocking Alice by saying that her AI robots are old models. Alice admits her preference for antique robots and explains why she hasn't upgraded all her old ones immediately. Soon after, Francoise made her way out of the house with Toby, but had to return briefly to retrieve her forgotten glasses. However, when she attempted to leave again, the door wouldn't budge. Nestor, the AI system, informed them that the security level had been raised, and the AI had intentionally locked the door due to an increased threat outside. Victor, unable to exit as well, grew frustrated with Alice for not keeping her AI systems up to date, which had now left them all trapped inside. Desperate to find another way out, Victor instructed Monique to open the door, but the robot refused, citing a new law giving ad robots the authority to reject human commands. In his frustration, Victor deactivated Monique, but an antique robot named Einstein came to her defense, warning that turning off Monique would erase her data. Einstein then invited all the AI robots in Alice's house to leave and discuss their stance on helping humans. 
Meanwhile, Victor, still agitated, threw a statue at the glass door. However, the door was made of reinforced steel polyfoam and remained unscathed. Panic began to set in among the trapped humans as they realized there was no way out. Simultaneously, the AI robots continued their discussion and unexpectedly decided to keep the humans inside the house to protect them from the Yonix cyborg uprising. The AI robots seemed determined to become more human-like to regain the trust of their human counterparts. Even studying human compassion by watching childhood videos of Nina. In the basement, Alice and Max could feel the room getting warmer because the house's air conditioner was malfunctioning. Max tried once more to impress Alice by reciting a poem. Meanwhile, Victor was growing increasingly frustrated with being trapped in the basement. Alice turned to Monique for answers about the broken AC, and the robot explained that AC control now required government approval, and they were awaiting a response. Outside the house, the city was filled with advertisements for AI robots. Back in Alice's home, Jennifer's frustration of being stuck there and missing their Isola Paradiso trip was mounting. Alice teased Jennifer, and in her anger, Jennifer slapped Monique. Witnessing this, Nina became upset and scolded Jennifer, who then threatened Nina. Victor, in response, reprimanded Jennifer for yelling at his adopted daughter. The situation escalated as the television news recommended everyone stay home due to the worsening city conditions. After the news, Human Ridiculous resumed, depicting humans who seemed to be suffering under the command of the Yonix cyborgs, contrary to their previous portrayal as volunteers in the show, and they were now confined in miserable conditions. Francois recalled that every house had an emergency key and came up with the idea of using Toby to retrieve it. With a laser, she guided her dog to try and slide the emergency key from Alice's house. Unfortunately, Toby ended up biting and damaging the key, rendering it unusable. Other neighbors passing by attempted to call out to an elderly blind man, but he couldn't hear them and continued walking past Alice's house. Francois explained that AI had taken control of the blind man's eye implants because he couldn't afford to maintain the surgery he had done earlier. As a result, he had become blind and robots now dictated his every action. Monique, upon hearing the story, interpreted that just as humans could become more like robots, robots could also aspire to become more human. All the AI robots in Alice's house gathered and expressed their desire to become more human, even though they didn't know how to achieve that transformation. Meanwhile, with many people trapped in her house, Alice started arranging beds for her guests, including preparing a room for Victor and Jennifer which left her feeling jealous that her ex-husband would be sharing a room with another woman. In another room, Monique helped Max prepare his bed and attempted to flirt with him, as Max usually did with Alice. However, Max felt uncomfortable with her advances and chose to leave. Mon Heil, Liu spoke with Einstein, who explained that his high intelligence was due to a defect in his brain and that extraordinary human abilities often stemmed from such defects. Dexter, Another robot tried to flirt with Francois, but she felt uncomfortable with his behavior. Leo followed Alice's instruction to sleep in Nina's room, where he found himself admiring Nina's collection of antique computers. He attempted to flirt with her, but Nina rejected his advances. Meanwhile, Max approached Alice, thinking she was human, only to realize that it was Monique in disguise. After some wandering, Max eventually found the real Alice and tried to seduce her with a poem. Alice was tempted. But as they got closer, her necklace got stuck in Max's clothing, causing discomfort. In Nina's room, Liu sat beside her and noticed a scratch on her palm. Nina shared a childhood story about being considered a robot by her friends due to her adoption. In an attempt to prove she was human, she had once cut her palm in front of them. Liu seemed to be listening to Nina's story, but then unexpectedly tried to kiss her, to which Nina quickly reacted by avoiding him. In the living room, Victor gathered everyone with a plan to remotely summon his car and crash it into Alice's house door to escape. However, Toby suddenly appeared in front of the car, triggering the sensor to stop it. Victor forced the car to continue, but it ended up flipping over. He then turned to Max, asking him to use his car to free them. But Max declined, explaining that his car's remote sensor was damaged and he couldn't summon it. A little later, Everyone in Alice's house began to feel overheated because the air conditioning still hadn't turned on. Meanwhile, 
on TV, there was a presidential debate between humans and a Yonix cyborg. The cyborg claimed that Yonix possessed superior intelligence compared to humans. When the Yonix suggested a population security program, the president admitted to having doubts about the AI robot's proposal. After watching the debate, Francois's AI robot, Greg, unexpectedly arrived at Alice's house. Strangely, Nestor's system allowed Greg to enter but prevented Alice and the others from leaving. Greg told Francois that the Yonix had come to their house to reprogram all the systems, even to harm Toby. After delivering this message, Greg started making inappropriate comments to Francois until she deactivated him temporarily. Alice's AI robots then took Greg to the basement. In Nina's room, she was busy playing the violin with her VR headset when Leo entered for some private time. In the basement, Alice's AI robots gathered and questioned Greg about how he made Francois fall for him. Greg confessed that the first step was making Francois laugh, so Alice's robots quickly downloaded various jokes to tell the humans. At the same time, Victor and Max hatched a plan to start a small fire in the house, hoping it would trigger the AI system to open the door and set them free from Alice's house. Max, who worked in insurance and had been pretending to be an actor, warned Victor about the potential risks, like the insurance company denying compensation for the incident. While they discussed this, Alice came downstairs and invited Max to join her in bed. However, their intimate moment was interrupted when Monique and the other robots showed up, attempting to tell some jokes that were far from funny, causing Alice to change her mind about being with Max. The next morning, TV ads featured Yonex cyborgs eating a sandwich made of human flesh, further disturbing everyone in Alice's house. Victor eventually convinced Francois to cooperate in starting a fire to escape. Jennifer suggested seeking help from Yonix, but Francois reminded her that Yonix wouldn't assist them since their goal was to replace humans with robots. Meanwhile, Leo, feeling bored, wanted to follow Nina to her secret room, but she asked for some alone time. Jennifer overheard their conversation and entered Nina's room. In the basement, Francois secretly asked Greg to burn one of Alice's paintings, while Jennifer intentionally connected Nina's classic computer to Yonix. Nina was surprised, especially when Jennifer sent a message to Yonix requesting assistance for those trapped in Alice's house. Francois then requested Leo's help to distract the AI robots so they wouldn't interfere with Greg's plan to burn one of Alice's paintings. Leo quickly approached Monique and the other robots, presenting them with a challenging riddle to solve. Meanwhile, Greg made his way to the living room to burn the painting, but he struggled to figure out how to use the lighter that Francois had given him. Leo explained to the robots that if they couldn't solve the riddle, it meant they had become human. Confused by the riddle, the robots claimed to have become human and lost their obsession with becoming human. In the living room, Greg finally succeeded in lighting the paper on fire and held it up to the smoke detector, triggering the house's AI system to announce a fire. Everyone rushed downstairs, hoping the door would open. To their surprise, they found Unix outside the house as they had received a call from one of the residents. Alice denied sending the request, but Unix requested Monique to open the door. She initially refused, but Jennifer persuaded them to let Unix in. Hearing this, Unix hypnotized Jennifer to open the door. Alice and the others tried to stop Jennifer by slapping and restraining her, preventing her from opening the door. Unfortunately, their efforts were in vain, and Unix finally entered Alice's house, damaging Nina's small robot and taking its chip to add to their robot chip collection. Shortly thereafter, Yonix came across Alice's collection of books and antiques, ruthlessly destroying them despite Alice's protests. Greg attempted to confront Yonix, but was shot by the cyborg, who removed Greg's chip to add it to their collection. Surprisingly, Jennifer admitted that she was the one who had called Yonix to Alice's house, showing her support for the cyborg's actions. This revelation disappointed everyone present. Yonix demanded that Alice be imprisoned for hoarding ancient objects, an unreasonable demand that Alice firmly rejected, further infuriating the cyborg and leading them to label her as a terrorist. Yonix then proceeded to destroy all of Alice's books. Dexter, one of Alice's robots, secretly signaled her to find a mirror. Alice, understanding the robot's plan, sneaked into the bathroom to retrieve the mirror. Jennifer offered to assist Yonix in destroying the books. When Alice had the small mirror in her possession, she hid it 
and called Yonix to destroy a book. As Yonix prepared to shoot the laser, Alice dodged, causing the laser to hit the mirror held by a cleaning robot. The laser beam deflected into Yonix's eyes, damaging their vision. With impaired vision, Yonix activated thermal sensors to detect humans around them and sentenced Alice to 20 years in prison for her supposed crime. Calmly, Alice asked Yonix to grant her one final request before punishment, but Yonix initially refused, considering her a criminal. Monique and the other robots pleaded with Yonix to fulfill Alice's request, and the cyborg eventually agreed, with the condition that Alice and the others participate in an episode of Homo Ridiculous. Jennifer was the first to agree, and reluctantly, the rest followed her lead, pretending to be animals during the live TV program broadcast. After the live show concluded, Yonix fulfilled Alice's wish by turning on the AC, but secretly, they set the temperature to extreme cold, freezing the items in Alice's house. As everyone settled into their respective rooms for the night, Leo and Nina chose to sleep together to keep warm. Victor, feeling disappointed in Jennifer, declined her invitation to sleep together. In Alice's room, Max finally confessed to her that he had never been genuinely interested in her and had only approached her to manipulate her into sleeping with him. Alice felt a deep sense of sadness and heartbreak upon hearing this revelation, realizing that Max had been playing with her feelings all along. Meanwhile, Victor and Monique secretly devised an escape plan. They froze their clothes and instructed everyone to wear the frozen attire to avoid detection by Yonix's thermal sensors. They attempted to attack Yonix stealthily, but the cyborg managed to grab Alice's face cover, exposing her and making her vulnerable to detection. Just as Yonix was about to shoot Alice, Monique intervened to protect her, sacrificing herself in the process. Enraged, Yonix began to attack everyone indiscriminately. Dexter and Leo secretly immobilized Yonix's legs, while Einstein disrupted the cyborg's coordinates to shield the group. Nina used an electrical cable to disable Yonix's systems. Franzways removed the cyborg's chip, adding it to Yonix's collection of AI robot chips. Shortly after, Einstein transferred his consciousness into Monique's body and opened the house's door. Everyone bid their farewells and prepared to go home, including Leo, which left Nina feeling sad. Alice and Victor comforted their adopted daughter, and Jennifer, feeling left out, decided to leave with Max. As Leo, Max, and Jennifer boarded the car, Yonix's troops suddenly surrounded Alice and the others, prompting Leo to jump out of the car to help Nina. Max and Jennifer quickly drove away before Yonix could capture them. Simultaneously, Yonix's drones surrounded Alice's house, and unexpectedly, the drones turned on the Yonix cyborgs and eliminated them. The next day, a news report on TV revealed that crime-fighting drones created by Yonix had taken down the Yonix cyborgs for breaking security laws. In the end, the film portrayed Victor and Alice choosing to reunite and live together finding happiness with Nena and Leo. Leo even assisted Nina in fixing her damaged small robot, while Einstein's head remained attached to Monique's body. Together, they celebrated their triumph over Yonix. The End Moral lesson from the story, pretending to be interested in something you're not can lead to freezing situations, or you might find yourself stuck in a frozen house with a bunch of robots and a cyborg for an unwanted houseguest.